I don't want to get little piggy oh, to- you know the internet would have a field day with that one. Yeah. <laughs> show feet, show feet, show feet. I'm not taking bite. Listen, you bring me a plate of spaghetti and we might talk. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux. Joined every week by the man up north. He's slightly less boxed in, but he's got a new Nintendo bag that is Jordan's fine. Look at him. Ah. I, I am the Game Boy. You are the boy of games and from Britannia across the ocean with this blue microphone cable as always. Juan Pedro Mateus. I was thinking about <laughs> something to put in between Pedro and Mateus, man, but I, just, I can't start feeling ill. Kind of Pedro know, the meatball nickname, sandwich uh, Mateus. Cool. I, I just got picked on a lot. So I no. I, I, listen, I wanted to have something to eat after this, so let's just not go. Uh, no, 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 it, 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 it's Pedro Peter Matthews Mateus. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Allowed. <laughs> Together with you at home, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Hey, what's new? Did anybody write anything down? I've been busy. No. No? Nobody's done anything? No. Not us. No. I, oh, I got I, I, um, Trinity R14. I mentioned this in the pre-show, but I got Trinity R14 running on Fedora 34 on the netbook. And uh, if you want a lightweight desktop environment, Trinity. Seriously, oh, it, it uses speaking. even less resources than XFCE, and it's a lot more like snappy <laughs> on older Sp- hardware. Spe- anyway. Speaking <laughs> speaking of Fedora 34, I upgraded this box to Fedora 34. Uh, they are nice enough to give you an option to roll back to Pulse Audio, so mm. on Pulse Audio and Jack on Fedora 34. Uh, yeah. Did you? Uh, are you are you using the Pulse Audio Jack stuff? Or yeah, you using Pipewire right now? No, I'm not using Pipewire right now. I'm just using Pulse Audio and Jack. Um, there's, 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 uh, one or two things that like, like the, uh, the, the pulse bridge or whatever doesn't fire up. Mm. I guess, I guess you don't really need that, but I don't, I don't know what the, com- I'm still trying to figure out what the equivalent pipe wire command is for that. You say that strangely enough. I was like reading through that the other night going through like, where are we at? Where are we at? And I always go and check the, uh, pipe wire to-do list. And finally mm-hmm. you see. At the very, very bottom, as bottom as he can get, <laughs> investigate that jack. I'm like, ah, followed by, I might use um, <laughs> Zeta, which I'm like, no, don't do that. Make net jack. Please. Yes, please. But <laughs> a lot of stuff to play around with. Um, I got that video out about the mage. Well, publish that if you're curious about how that um, ludicrously expensive um, quad HDMI card works on Linux. Turns out pretty well. It's pretty decent. And uh, that's about it. Playing around with some audio stuff. Pretty laid back week. Yeah, it's I mean, the horse has been hyperactive, though. He's been like running around, starting fires. Oh, yeah. Also, fair warning. If my stream deck crashes because my Raspberry Pi died, um, things might get squirrely. It's more on that in the news. Hang on. I I got to buttons are in different places, man. Calm down. Oh, no. No, I'm so <laughs> hyperactive. The horse is running around and it's got me all wired up. And now I'm about to scream that it's the Steam Monix. A chew. No, there will be no a chewing because we need to talk about super serial, like big news, man. And by that, I mean, like, Gaben sneezed. So we need to write some articles about it. Gabe Newell teases the possibility of bringing Steam games to console. You will get a better idea of that by the end of the year. So that's all he fucking said, but let's write an article about it, right? Hey, yeah. man, you, you need to, it's the slow news day. You need to put out content somehow, Dude, right? But well, we can't tell you about it, man. It was too hot for the internet. The post has been deleted. Something completely nefarious uh, took place. It was too top secret. And I, no, it wasn't. Yeah. It's like, we, like, please, it's just like Gabe going, or Valve going, please do not take this as an actual thing. This is an offhanded comment someone made. Uh, But like, yeah, there's some tinfoil hat stuff getting thrown around about what this could mean potentially. Um, I'm I'm taking a little bit more of a grounded view here. Uh, Steam for consoles is likely just going to be like remote play together and maybe synchronized friends list. Maybe some save syncs if you're nasty, but I still don't think that's going to happen. 
Because, like, you, you think think about uh, Microsoft and EA. They have a similar sort of, like, digital passports on Steam where you can, like, pay a recurring fee and then just get free access to games and so on and so forth. So it makes sense yep. that maybe Valve would try to expand in a similar way, maybe not with, like, actual games, although Artifact is coming to PS5 confirmed. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> if you really want to read like the crowbars and set them out and see if you can divine something out of it, this is clearly, you know, Half-Life 3 confirmed exclusive on Xbox, whatever the hell it is next. Probably not, kids, but <laughs> like you, like you at home, I'm curious what it could mean, if anything, because it's not like Steam makes a lot of games. Let's just be honest about that artifact. So, the whole pitch of Lords of the Fallen. That one was actually good. People actually move, like that one. <laughs> going to move some Steam games um, to other consoles. Maybe that could be a thing, but I, I don't know. I'm thinking this or, is or, ooh. this this was Gabe going. Oh right, we're going to put um, Half Life Alex on the PS5 or something. So oh, stay tuned. Ooh, Crobos. yeah, the, the, that, that's, that's, that's kind of where I'm at not too. Saying anything. <laughs> right well yeah like you you you, you could tell that he's like oh i there, there's something that i'm not supposed to say so i'm just going to allude to it and yeah cue the rampant speculation wheel we gotta bring out the wheel of booga booga right and here we are yes yeah yes, because yes. literally what he said is you'll get a better idea of that by the end of this year and all of a sudden you have I saw my Twitter feed go crazy when the video was first posted on Reddit and it's like, oh, Valve might be getting into consoles, this and that's like, eh? hmm? what the hell? Where are you getting that from? <laughs> I mean, kudos to Gabe, his ability to not say a damn thing and just launch tons of rampant speculation throughout the internet. I guess if he ever decided to run um, for office in any country that I can vote in, that's two of them. <laughs> uh, I'd totally vote for him. That's absolutely so. No I, I, I mean, <laughs> I want to go ahead and throw this out then. Wouldn't you have much rather seen Steam machines come out today with things like Proton and Proton and did I mention Proton? And yeah, just a more mature <laughs> Being able to play. Well, just the game the engine environment the, itself right like, now, you know, yeah. Unreal yeah. Tech, but we got Godot, we got Unity, and like the barrier to entry, the friction. Shut up. Um, <laughs> spoilers it is there but also i saw the internet kind of flipping up because that video went poof on the internet I'm like oh mm -hmm. what, it got disappeared yes. cue, cue the x-files <laughs> piano riff do, 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 do. i got curious and i went looking for the video and I, the only reason i knew Pedro was like oh omg uh you know it, it's gone so, uh, what's what it says in the notes is seems like it got disappeared Yes. It, yeah. The, I mean, the, the video on the post has been removed. So shrug. I don't, I don't know. What but, happened but, was back to the original thing I started there is that was filmed in the school. It's like, yo, there's some kids in the video that blow their faces, pull the video down. And everyone's like, oh, cool. Mm. We don't want to worry about that. So, Rob, yes. I, and I mean, like, then to your point, Gabe could like stumble over a piece of rubble while walking and people would be like, oh no, does that mean he tripped three times? Does that mean Half-Life 3? Mm -hmm. So, you never know. <laughs> what, what I do know, though, is that no titties. No, no. titties. Not at all? Can't have Yeah. Them. So, yeah. Not um, real titties, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, Holodex sex, 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 sex. It's a VR application. Uh, it's meant to like give you simul simulated encounters with uh, real life uh, looking people. In this case, they had a demo with Riley Reed and another one with uh, Marley Brinks, two well-known adult film stars that I know nothing about. Yes. No, nothing no. at all. No, <laughs> sir. Um, but yeah, um, they submitted, they submitted their experience to the Valve VR process and they're like, yeah, we're not allowing like straight up porn on our on our system or on our platform. And there's there's some uh, feedback from the Holodex XX developers about how we weren't really given concrete feedback beyond we know what's porn because we're watching porn right now. And it's it's raised some questions about uh, content on Steam because um, I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll bring up Resident Evil 8. I've been watching playthroughs of it. You can watch horrible, horrible things happen to Ethan Winter's hands. <laughs> but you can't but mm -hmm. no 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 titty you, you can't you can't you can't show this that's too that's too racy well you gotta think about it man when we're talking about valve we're talking about steam no porn because porn is bad only murder please 
and smash the pens and all that fun stuff because hey is the steam policy itself i'm not arguing for or against it i think like everyone especially this game developer i had to like what that's even a thing because i'm old um you know the the steam policy is hypocritical as hell It, it just is but does steam absolutely also sell porn games yes they do um I think that's I, the confusion. Yeah, the, the, the issue the issue here is very much the depiction of real people, and uh, that is a thing that is actually Valve have in the past uh, gone after people or not not allowed the games on Steam because they had depictions of real people in sexual yeah. situations. You can't there, have that. There, there's a bit of a <laughs> bureaucratic like nightmare world that would result from having like brand name people. Mm. Uh, or like actual brand name porn on their platform with like Hello Kitty Island Adventure, you know that every single one of these like religious conservative anti porn groups will just like, oh well, now we got to start like sending cease and desist and letter writing campaigns, and that's a lot of that's a lot of eyes that Valve really doesn't want on their platform because if we've known anything from Valve's actions in the past, they don't really like when people are looking at what they're doing. Um, mm-hmm. So I will it, say it, it, it makes sense thing. why they rejected, but the, it's not yeah. Yeah, live and learn. And the developer, the reason this was a little bit of a news story was just simply that they've been trying back and forwards of saying, hey, we'll make a PG-13 version. And Valve's like, no. So, yeah, just I think Valve, do you think Valve just has a problem saying no? There's two nights? Like, ah, oh, maybe. <laughs> Could you change? You know, just, yeah. Hey, look, the sexual game, take all the nudity out. They'll never do that. And we won't have to tell them no. Hey, we're back. We did that. And you're like, hmm. Okay. We well, something else. But I do want to say this. <laughs> I learned something because doing a little bit of research into this, clicking on those links, getting the backstory and going to the blog, Google News. It's like, hey, is that something you're into? I'm like, no. I'm not, <laughs> you know, you got all the poor news. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I got my gym. I got my gym because apparently, honestly, I couldn't click on it because I was scared I might see something that Yahoo did an article. Apparently, if you want a. Uh, an elf, real dolls get you covered. That I believe that 100%. Uh, I, I just I just want to add that if you are interested in getting your virtual uh, knob polished by Riley Reed, they do have all their stuff on their itch page, so you can buy it there. All right. Let's talk about Proton because there is a fix. Which you know nothing about. Nope. Never heard of Proton. <laughs> it's, it's like a subatomic particle or something. Check this out. A couple of hot fixes, a couple of things. There is like this. Did anybody run into it? Um, Proton Glorious Egg Roll, if you don't know it, is how we play a bunch of gang of Windows games, and Glorious Egg Roll is usually slightly ahead of uh, what Steam is cooking currently. But if they do a large changes in Y and 6.5, you're going to need to remove the old prefixes. Pedro, did you run into that? I saw some people talking about it on the internet, and they're like, oh my god, I had to move I the just did it before... I, I did it before I even tried to launch it without, because I like Nier, and I like what I've played so far, so I just made sure the cloud saves were working and yeah now the big one the big one resident evil village yeah now works you can get that re-engine in there but for me big 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 steppy vampire mama's house yeah there's a bunch of things you know borderlands 2 borderlands 3 there's some audio fixes Yu-Gi-Oh. i mm, that's thing children's card games yeah (laughs) okay that's the thing it happened but most importantly most critically you can now get past the halfway point in near just make sure you don't mm-hmm. unplug your controller because they have to plugging. they have to yeah hot plugging mm-hmm. is disabled uh just because there's some problems getting it working but you know if if your choices are hot plugging and crashy game or no hot plugging and non-crashy game this kind of uh well let's be perfectly honest do you fully expect hot plugging to work period no, absolutely With not. Unity games nowadays, I try it deliberately because they've been doing Ste- a very good job of actually supporting Ste- that. <laughs> Steam input has kind of spoiled me because it's like, oh, there's always a controller connected, right? It's just Steam input. Mm-hmm. Um, How, but you, you, Okay, out of the three of us, anybody willing to risk that in the middle of a game on stream? I have. Ah. It, sometimes, sometimes it works. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Mm. <laughs> All right, time to kill the game, restart it. There we go. (laughs) Sometimes you got to eat that horse. All right. But in in the land of non-egg roll proton, there's sacred tissues. Yes, the the original bit of news was going to be, oh, there's a new uh, release candidate for proton 6.3-4. 
Well, <laughs> in about three days, they had re- the release candidate hammered out, and yes, they fixed some recent uh, 2K games uh, launcher updates. Uh, they fixed the error on startup for Direct 3D uh, 12 games. Divinity Original Sin 2 and Rise of Venice, uh, the launchers had issues. Those have been fixed. The Star Wars Squadrons VR incorrectly launching the desktop version also fixed. And the one I actually cared about, which is the last one, Sacred Gold. Uh, I'm like, ooh, they finally fixed the, the visual glitch where um, if you could actually see like the textures if you were, your character was wearing armor. You could see like the back armor through the chest of your character. It's like it was ethereal uh so they finally fixed that that's been a long uh, standing bug with uh wine and i'm like oh yeah i can finally go back and actually play through the game without that stupid bug couldn't launch it couldn't even start it. <laughs> so i put the whole spiel on the, pedro, uh, on the show notes <laughs> pedro pedro what is it with you in this damn game I like it's it. Diablo. It's a buggy mess uh, of a game. It's yeah, it's a Diablo this, clone. This is like Pedro's white whale, man, because even in Discord earlier this week, there were like cheers of celebration followed by um the opposite of that. Yeah, the, because the game wouldn't launch. You'd launch it's like, oh, application load error 0x02. The fuck is that? I Googled and I Googled and I Googled. Nothing. The only thing that uh, I thought it might be, because after I tried a bunch of different things, like changing Proton versions, starting with Proton G, trying oh, with yeah, Proton I, I like the part where you did a victory lap and you're like, oh. <laughs> 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 and then uh, I finally saw a post on the Steam forums about someone else who'd had a similar thing, but that was because he had two installs of Windows. He was, yeah, he was uh, dual booting Windows. Windows, uh, Win- XP Windows and Windows? Windows 7. Yeah, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he was dual booting Windows XP and Windows 7. And after he removed Windows XP and it was just Windows 7, Steam stopped giving these errors with certain games. So I started thinking, okay, the only thing even remotely close to that is that I have my games on their own dedicated SSD on a separate uh, Steam library folder, which you can set in Steam, which is how I'd how I'd done it. So I had to change it back uh, to the default local share Steam. And then the game just worked. Hmm? I don't, why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. why don't but can you can but can after all of this, can you confirm that the graphical glitches are missing in Sacred Two? Yes, uh, the the graphical glitches were in fact fixed. Thank you, Valve. That, Thank you very much. Then, <laughs> then I can finally die in peace. There I know are for two certain. Two people ecstatic right now. One of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Steam uh, uh, UI, man. Command line Steam. Not, this is not the first time we've talked about something that. It's kind of no. capable of this, is it? No, this is a Steam Tui from uh, Dimadsedi on GitHub. You can check out uh, that linked in our show notes. And yeah, it is a uh, Rust-based Steam command line utility. Uh, it's uh, kind of like a curses style application. And it's just a Steam client because apparently the creator has a real bad PC that don't run Steam too well. But it's true. I guess like Steam has games with lower system requirements than Steam. So it makes sense, I suppose. Sorry, I, I was creeping on the game list. What reason? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I looked through it. It's, pr- it's pretty basic. It doesn't, doesn't have anything too incriminating. No subverse or anything like that. No, no, like hentai simulator 2020. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Sacred Gold, for example, that's uh, that's a game that requires less uh, would, resources would to you, run Would you Steam be quiet nowadays? about Sacred Gold for once? No. Nope. For once in your life. <laughs> he had Stop talking about it. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the uh, I tried to get this running on the netbook. Um, unfortunately, there is no package of Steam CMD on Fedora. No one bothered to package it properly. You can download it, you can run it just fine, but this expects it to be in the path. So uh, you either set up the path to include whatever folder you have um, a Steam CMD installed on, or you just... I couldn't be asked, basically, because I wanted to get it running on the netbook because the processor is so slow and it would be nice because, Here's, you know, this Steam semi, is semi, nowadays. Semi-related <laughs> question. It's it's Linux-related. Do you have dot in your path? Do you have the current working directory in your path? 
Do you set that by default? Uh, not by default, no. Probably should. Where's your god now? <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm genuinely curious. Send us some hate mail because I know, I know people who do that. They're just like, yeah, I could just run any command out of the current directory, like Windows. But I think, uh, I, I think no. that's a bad idea. Yes. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I curi- see, I'm curious. Yeah, I can see it, it making your job a lot easier in situations such as this one, but. Uh, <laughs> mm, some things are yeah, done certain ways for a reason. Send us, send us some hate mail if you're one yes. of these people who puts current direct your current directory in your path, or if you're anyway. somebody who uh, accidentally leaks source code on the internet. Uh, <laughs> oops, oops. Oops. oops, doodle. Uh, yeah, we'd lo- we'd love to have you on for an internet era interview. By the way, yeah, Steam for an internet, you know, expo. It's like Fall Guys leaked their game code in the latest Steam update by shipping the IL2 CPP code. That's right. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not too b- Oh, no. Um, <laughs> that's all the C files. You know, was, there. <laughs> Pedro, I, 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 I heard it might even get. Oh, no. Um, yeah. oh, no. Back, oh, back yeah. up this folder and don't ship it with your game. <laughs> yeah. But by the, by the way, developers. There, there's a thing called a git ignore file that you can set up and then you can just like have extensions that git will not ship with your product. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, the interesting bit is, well, like everyone else, I went through the list on SteamDB. It's like, okay, let's see if anything's interesting. I started scrolling. Eh, that's just box standard game stuff. Control F, easy anti Oh, look. There's hacker. everything. Hacker. The client, the DLLs, Filthy the Linux source code hacker. for the client. Ooh. <laughs> and, but you, you know you know what's funny too is if it wasn't for a project like Steam DV, this would go under the radar. Oh, yeah. They they would have been oopsie doopsie, <laughs> pulled it back, and no one would know anything. But you got Pavel here, he's looking at all of these depot updates. Community He's like, accountability, oh. bitch. Uh-huh. I mainly threw this in the show notes because you know it, it runs a proton big deal. That's not even why, because you know it's it's kind of steamy news, um, nonetheless. No matter how you look at it, but it's not every day a company is going to be dropping source to that extent in their repo long enough for the internet to go. You know, and um, no, no. <laughs> excuse what, us. <laughs> what would it be? What would be super nice is if Fall Guys is like. You know what, Maya culpa, guys. We're releasing the source code for Fall Guys. Excuse me, I gotta go take a bong hit. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> so if we had to take a bet, what do you, what's the under and over and like some unofficial name of clients showing up at as a result of this? I think there's going to be a lot of cheats that uh, well, find their that, way around easy anti cheat. That's a given. That's a given. <laughs> like a lot yeah. of them. <laughs> mm. Well, this, this, this is why Easy Anti Cheat is going to introduce the new extra kernel driver, where you actually have to install it in your BIOS in order to connect no, to the game server. No, small guys, what you need to do <laughs> ring minus one. The only thing you can do to fend off the nasty hackers, Fall Guys, is to get a wrestler. That's right. New RVD RV, new characters. Rob Van Dam. Do, do, yeah, wait, okay, <laughs> seriously, real talk, real talk. You knew who the hell this was. I knew who this was because I ro- I watched wrestling in the nineties. So, yeah, Rob Rob Van Dam. Uh, he was a wrestler uh, at like Attitude Era ECW that shit. Um, he's in Mean Greens now apparently because the makers of Mean <laughs> Greens are big '90s wrestling fans. I I'm as confused as the rest of you, but you know what? Here it is. They also they yeah look, look it's it's RVD. Uh, they, they, if you scroll down, they also have Frank. I, I want I want playable Frank in Mean Greens. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> but you but know, yeah, if no, you want, has if wrestling you, fallen on those hard a time that uh, Mean Greens are a good option for Rob Van Dam. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think Rob da- Van Dam has r- fallen upon hard enough times that he needs to lend his likeness to the Mean Greens. I think maybe you have the, the order of operations there mixed up a little bit. It's currently bit. 249. Uh, there's a bunch of other adi- uh, additions and changes and bug fixes. I hope, man, I really hope the bug fixes because a couple of months ago, we're like, hey, we had a fun time playing that at one point um, mm. in the after shows and multiplayer. It was kind of fun. Oh, boy, it's broken. Yes. yes, I would. I would appreciate if their windowed mode would actually like capture my cursor no. so that I don't accidentally <laughs> click on things when I'm trying to kill people. Jordan, demanding stuff like that, you're what's wrong with Linux. Yeah, so. I'm. I'm very. I'm very entitled. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, what is this, man? I want to see. This looks kind of neat. 
It looks uh, very Dead Cellsy. That was the first thing that I'm, I looked at it. Oh, it's Waifu Dead Cells. No, 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 no. The art style absolutely does. And big kudos to um, Altari Games or Dangan Entertainment. As far as I could tell, they're the same people. Dangan, Bobby. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, they sent us some keys, so we will be having a look at this game at some point. And I did play around with it a little bit, and it's not Dead Cells. The combat is a little too slow and deliberate, and it's That's very much Metroidvania. Uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, a roguelike, though. That's Yay. no, no, it isn't. <laughs> that, that that is that is remarkable for these sorts of games. If you see like a Metroidvania. <laughs> Odds are, if it, if it's been made in the past couple of years, it's a roguelike. This one actually has like created levels and like you get to smash curated experiences. With teddy bears, I'm sold. Yes, teddy bears uh, and, and brooms. You can get a broom weapon if you find the bathroom in the game. Yes, <laughs> that's the the, the, the the animation there really reminds me of like out of this world, like that the the old like PC game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and it uh, it absolutely there's you know plenty of anime girls and the the big slime girl with the uh, with, green with the titties. titties. But yeah. <laughs> oh look, oh look, it's yeah, Jill. Like, there she is. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and the uh, I, I had a look because there's an in-game gallery, and I would have a look. It's like okay, is there any saucy stuff? No, no, this is all surprisingly above board. Okay. All right, it's a Metroidvania with waifus. Let's go then. The big takeaway from this, you do not need a CPU or operating system in order to play it, but only on Linux. Yes. You only need need to open GL. You can get that open GL compatible memory. Magic Mac. On Mac Mac as well, yeah. Ah, ah, so you you can run it on the M1. Cool. Yes. What's our uh, different... Oh, graphics. That's right. Magic Macs don't have graphics. Um, No, the, the metal. Metal. You need metal. Mm-hmm. You just you just need a piece <laughs> like 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 an ingot of iron or something, just some metal. Okay, that's about what they have these days. Uh, hunt down pixel goodness keeps yes. on coming. Uh, hunt down is basically, I guess, another entry to the uh, cyberpunk overload after you know cyberpunk twenty seventy seven did what it did. Ah, not, it did I, th- I, th- I think this is wet fart. <laughs> I don't know. This, this is, this is more like eighties action schlock. Like this is more, Blade yeah, this is metal slug. This is uh, a yeah. cyberpunk metal slug. Cyber that, slug. That, that is what it is <laughs> effectively. And uh, the thing that I want Just you all to do knitting. that doesn't cost you any money uh, is to go to the steam page for this, uh, for this game and just look at the second trailer. That was very well done. That was yeah, that, genuinely very well yeah. done. <laughs> the, the, the grind, the, no, yeah, that yes. one with the with the grindhouse narration is so good. It. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, like they have they have their their best uh, voice actor doing their grindhouse trailer impersonations, like Thanksgiving, brought to you by Eli Roth. <laughs> Thanksgiving, like that that shit. Everything he owns is made of metal. <laughs> Uh, it's no it's actually very well done you need to at least watch that trailer because it was good and you, you can yeah, find no, links to that in our show games. notes how yes. dare <laughs> the only negative thing i'm going to say it's, about this it does there. look good it really does it's reasonably priced too i mean it's currently available on 1 15.99 but it's single player only so oh why oh, why co <laughs> coffee stain why they're publishing it i know they're not developing it but network multiplayer come on no we gamepad highly recommended yes obviously. <laughs> but yeah this is uh i mean maybe single player would be okay but when i see a game like this i immediately think you know pixel brawler shooter you know like so, d- double dragon yeah uh, yeah i, I want uh, some multiplayer bro force yeah, yeah bro, force. <laughs> bro force has kind of spoiled us in that respect oh you want multiplayer there you go <laughs> All right. well i guess that's the thing um indeed we gotta bounce out here i want a quick shout out what is it flutter shy 2077 flutter shy 2077 5000 bits and i think bits are good right Woo-hoo! <laughs> yeah that's 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 like what 5 bucks I don't know. 5 dollars yeah. it's more than we have that's not not too bad coming up next very much Stadia is still alive you guys it's totally not being moving it's not moving around cuz we're pumping it full of money it's no moving. moo it's it's the cash cow baby stadia And uh, the size of your virtual member is not being called into question here. Absolutely not. What about your virtual membrane keyboard? I was going to say membrane, but I didn't know where to go with that. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, your I virtual did. membrane, that that is very much in question. And, uh, well, uh, if you wait till the end of the show, we'll tell you how to get in touch with us. This, this is the opposite. This is us telling you uh, that you're awesome, that you're amazing, and somehow you decided that it was a good idea to give us uh, funds. Well, Dude, dude, Pedro, 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 Pedro. If you if you think about it, money does equal speech. We've we've determined this. So this is yes. this is a hate mail. <laughs> this is a hate mail section of a sort, but it's the more twisted hate mail segment where you keep keep giving us money so that I, we have I to do this week in and week out. T-shirt, I, there's like guns and roses. <laughs> Reverse man. hate mail. Dude, I've <laughs> it's, had it's got like, like it's. I have had use your illusion too, like three or four times. Queued up. Yeah, it, it, it's like a evil skull Carmen Miranda. I like it. Um, but yeah, uh, we got we got financial support options. You can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Financial support options. <laughs> yes, if you need financial support, too bad. Give us money. Um, yes, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Get some cool stuff for signing up, like access to our Discord, which you can also get from um, subscribing to us on Twitch, so you can do that. Um, you can get access to the show notes, the pre-pre-super shows, and you can contribute your own show notes to the show notes and um you can even buy your way on the damn show if you want if you wanted to there, there are plugs i'm running out of uh, fingers man so then then get the, get them get them socks off buddy let's let's see some tootsies i don't want to get piggy oh the, you know the internet would have a field day with that one yeah. sh- show feet show feet show feet i'm show. not taking my listen you bring me a plate of spaghetti and we might talk <laughs> Now, uh, unfor- unfortunately, uh, we don't have Linux Gamecast socks, but we do have a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy some LGC apparel from that. We got masks, we got coffee cups, we got sweatshirts, we got t-shirts. Stickers. No fanny packs. Stickers for your laptops. Stickers for your Linus Sticker. posters. Yes. Or, or yes. your nipples. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we also got Amazon wish zones. If you want to get us some stuff, you can help support the show. Um, you can send us a note. We'll read it on the internets for you. And if you send stuff to Ven, you get your name on the glowy board behind him. Yes. Good. Just like Joe. John. <laughs> fucking Joe Johnson. Ven's head. Yes. Joe Ven's. Good old Joe Ven's head. Old. He's my favorite. We, 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 we got, we got, some, we got some people. We got to, we got to thank this week. Um, yeah, we do. Aldeus, I got uh, a backup note because um, last week we was like chilling out. Then uh, I got like this new little replacement, but still new. A little power strip for the back back here, which is awesome. As we have it, get that plugged it in. Keeps everything all, you know. It was better than the old one where plugs would fall out of it. So thank you very much. But Amazon didn't make it with a note. Now, Aldis is like, hey, man, I'm not having any of that nonsense. So <laughs> after much work, he, he defeated our spam golem uh, with the help of Pedro. He sent me a DM yep. and I'm like, oh, OK, I'll pass it along. Right. <laughs> so because Aldius is a dirty hacker. Our belated note is from Aldius, which I should have read last week, but I got to read this week is power up Pedro's nips with this, which is this multi switch uh, thing of nipple power. Don't even bother suggesting that as a show title. Um, have fun with the wiring for this thing, unless you're replacing a power strip, which I was replacing it with the exact model of that. So life hack. Drop in replacement. Yes, it was brilliant. <laughs> Aldius, you are my new favorite person. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. No, Arthurian sent me something to my new favorite person, <laughs> Arthurian. <laughs> um, actually, what I'm using right now, man, um, the updated pop filter. They're great. Um, I wanted something where I can like see the damn monitor for a change instead of my dual layer. So I just kind of backed off this and re EQ'd some things. But from Arthur, who's also one of our advisors, he writes in, Hi, Vin. I hope your current pop filter isn't a disease-filled Petri dish of nope, as Jordan's last one. In any case, enjoy your new fly swatter. All the worst, from Arthur. <laughs> Remember to come over around, to- you know, smacking big vampire ladies in the butt with your fly swatter? <laughs> if... <laughs> I, I gotta go to over to Ben's house and eat a sandwich in front of his pup filter now. If, happen, if you want to see the biological wonder that is Jordan's pop filter, um, yeah, in, in you pro- can play Resident Evil Eight in progress. <laughs> just go back and watch the pre pre super shows. You, you can see how the magic is made. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's Soup. how that happened. <laughs> There's probably stuff growing in that pop filter that will just fuck penicillin up. I mean, let's be honest. 
No, I, I see there's there's an eight foot tall vampire lady in my pop filter right now. Okay. She's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's very secretly a hundred feet tall. <laughs> it's about that time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got I got the big titties and the big ass. Don't don't you know it? Um, Where are you going to go with that? Jordan's fine. <laughs> uh, on your face with my giant ass. Uh, we got we got uh, regular news we got to talk about. Um <laughs> Like uh, the ghost. <laughs> yeah, I know. The smoothest transition. <laughs> you, you don't see any fucking broadcast amateurs landing that. <laughs> no, no. Seamless. Listen, listen it, it, it flies like my titties through the airs. We got we got to talk about the Go Godot game jam. Uh, this is a new one that's coming up soon. Uh, brought to you by um, a developer named Adrian. Um, and what they want to do is... Uh, In addition to running a game jam, they want to do sort of a festival where they're sourcing a lot of like practical examples, tutorials, et cetera, et cetera, so that people can go listen to some talks, watch some YouTube videos, and then actually participate in the subsequent game jam after learning about some of Godot's newer features, which is, I think, a cool idea because it gives people a starting point. It brings people into the game development space and gives them something that they can immediately use, which is kind of a good thing because a lot of times you'll get bogged down in theory when really you just need to have something you can start iterating on, even if it's just very basic. Uh, So uh, it's going to be coming spoon and you should go join it. If you're interested in making some games with Godot. Pedro, I just saw you. They did say, uh, yes, I did. Uh, did I gotta uh, thank uh, Stephen Briggs. It was amazing. <laughs> Lots of potassium, the <laughs> and a lot of fiber. Not as much as the that, potato. That, that, that <laughs> yes, you gotta eat more potatoes. The, um, we do need to thank uh, Stephen Briggs because he just pledged a five dollar on the Patreon. Our newest Ooh, Patreon. I didn't know you thank could you. count that high. I'm damn. <laughs> That's why I threw it to you. I was like, "We're well, just gonna bury this." You're like, "What's that squiggly number? I don't know." Purple. <laughs> five whole data. <laughs> I want five dollars. Give me five dollars. Yeah, uh, going back to the Go Godot uh, jam, the, the the they were very cagey about the theme. I don't know why. They're saying, "Oh yeah, no, we'll announce the theme closer to the um, actual date of the actual." They don't jam have one because mm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, now, when you said Adrian earlier, Jordan. My mind went immediately to the Adrian. So did everyone to. else's now. Thank you, Pedro yeah. Mateus. Um, dun, 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 dun. Go run up some stairs, why don't you? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, right. Um, so we were talking earlier about, um, and this will endear me to the gaming community, uh, like an unlimited <laughs> class in the Olympics where you can just do all the drugs you want. Mm-hmm. Do you think we can <laughs> yes. apply that to game development gems? Probably, yeah. Just do a bunch of oh, yeah, just do a bunch of HGH and start <laughs> churning out code. You got a bunch of these like muscly jacked out programmers going like, oh, compiler error. Mm. And I guess butthole lemonade didn't want to get left behind and also pledged five dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> That will buy you some human growth hormone from the LGC store. Good news, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Google Stadia is alive and well. This comes from GameIndustry.biz, where a Google person's like, yeah, we haven't killed it yet. I mean, it's doing great, you guys. Don't worry about it. It'll be around forever. Eons to come. I mean, you got to think about it. You really do, because Stadia's web store got a search engine, you know, bar, like where you can do little searches for games. At the end of April, you don't push out advancements like that. For a product you plan on killing. Right, Epic Game Store? <laughs> I mean, especially when you consider that it's Google, you know, the people known for their search engine. But hey, they did an interview with, uh, what's his name? Nate Ahern. I'll go with that one. Uh, and he's the developer uh, marketing lead at Google, and he's in charge of the uh, Stadia bits. Uh, not in charge, in charge like of just near. the marketing side. A little bit, yes, with more hair. The, yeah. <laughs> the, um, uh, he, he gave an interview and said that, no, it's not dead. We've signed a bunch of contracts and we're closing in on a hundred games that were brought into Stadia this year alone. I'd very much actually like to see the list of those, but okay. Uh, the, I mean, the, 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 the guy the, who can't count. Uh, yes. <laughs> 
the um they also said that the developers who are creating games for uh, Stadia, they're not in any way, shape, or form being encouraged to create Stadia exclusives. I mean, if that worked for Steam, then I mean, maybe. we're paying the money to do that, but that's, that's hug yes. money. Hug money, not hush money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, guess like, uh, if it works for Steam to say it publicly that, no, oh, no, 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 we're not encouraging... Um, Exclusives? No. Can you just imagine that being at Google? Like, oh, what type of dipshit question is that? We have to pay through the nose to get people to port something to Stadia. Are you mad? Yeah, and and that's kind of it, right? The project will stay alive as long as Google is willing to pump money into hiring devs to port things over. I don't really see a lot of these in-house people actually like, or in these uh, development houses like hiring in-house people to port their stuff to Stadia. Um, I mean. The, the the I mean Pedro brings it up in the show notes the the entire model of it does not lend itself to any sort of like real longevity. There's no guarantee that you'll be able to keep the things that you buy for full price. I'm going to say especially this. considering it's Google. <laughs> They're known for killing shit. Well, that's what Google right. does. I I think I said it like last. Can you imagine like thinking taking that job for any being in the product manager of Google Studio for any other reason? Like, oh, I'm going to get paid for that. How much? All right. I'll oh, do that yeah. until you kill it. All right. That'll be an easy job. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll be a nice resume ad because it's like, it's not your fault that the project didn't go off the ground. Google never had faith in it. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> like, we were working for Google. A oh, public I'm sorry. facing project manager at Google has got to be a ride, man. You could aspire to get that position. Like, hey, it's win-win. Um, mm-hmm. We got to do a little bit of a sad, though. We do. Got got dicks out for the smock zero. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. This thing's come dude, back so many times. Dude, uh, I know that, that's the marriage one. It's, it's, it's given Jesus a run for his money. Oh, dude, talk about lag. So, Smash Z, you might have known it billions of years ago, seven, eight years ago. Uh, it was called the Steam Boy, and it made some news because, hey, it could technically run Linux, and it's going to be, this is back when Linux consoles were a thing. And it had Steam Steam controllers and all that fun stuff. And I was like, hey, and like, oh, not Steam Boy. (laughs) Smash the Zen. And um, schmuck. It has just been a kaleidoscope of nightmares ever since then. Kickstarters, Indiegogos, excuses. And hey, the second COVID was out, they're like, oh, hey, by the way, COVID. Yep. Can't do it now. (laughs) This is the thing that killed us. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. They didn't. We, we don't. We don't want to blame it entirely, but we're gonna. We're gonna blame it entirely. We're gonna lay some love on it. But I mean, it, I, according to this, this is their last uh, backer update, the most recent one from this week. Uh, it's it's kind of gone, man. Uh, they said the only chance we have right now is if we pick up some additional investors. And to be perfectly honest with everyone, I, I don't think anyone else is willing to let you fuck up any more perfectly good money. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I just they, they, don't. They, 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 because they they say, they say in, oh, go on. Uh, well, the team has demonstrated just a raw inability to execute and to get a product to mm-hmm. market, which admittedly is the most bullshit hard way of the last bit, you know, getting something out. But during that time, other teams, Kickstarters, Indiegogos, yeah. and projects have. Yeah. The, GPD they're, and they're, INEO being the two big ones behind that. Ayo. The INEO had a working thing before they even launched their crowdfunding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're, 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 they're saying in terms of like refunds, oh yeah, we're, we're selling all our assets right now. So if we have any money left over, you'll, you can get a refund. We've been given refunds constantly, which is really not a good sign for your project. But you know what? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe while they're selling off their assets and their IP to pay off their debtors, maybe someone will say, "Hey, I can maybe mass produce this prototype," and they might even do a run of the hardware. Excuse me, I got to go take another bong hit. Um, well, we definitely got to talk about the, um, <laughs> you know, Pedro brought it up, the I uh, Neo because that came out of nowhere. I'm like, hey, we got this, mm-hmm. and we're doing a little Indiegogo, which I said at the time, I'm like, that 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 product is made. It is sitting in crates. They are just doing. How many and where do we ship them? Which is what they did. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Even if somebody was to come back and attempt to, you know, last minute, we're going to save the day and we're going to get this product out of the door. It would be a retro gaming console at this point. That was kind of the ass. Like, I I, I don't know, because the the people who are looking at the Smock Zero and saying, like, this is a thing that I want. They're saying, 
Yes, to I want to play games, modern AAA games mm-hmm. at 720p low yeah. on a seven inch screen because uh, I got nothing better FPS. to do with my awesome. <laughs> right. Like the, the 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 type of people who are buying this are not in there for like high performance gaming consoles. So I can see like yeah, retro whatever. It's not that big a deal to the people who actually put it's money too forward. Boutique of a market, really. Do, but yeah. then again, the AO AO um showing that hey man, we we can print these things and make money. Now we do want to point out that the official reason is uh, just like an issue with the battery is from mm. smash that team. They said, Hey, once it gets low battery, get hot, get explain that. And they were unable to overcome this technical challenge. Maybe if they because removed the, the little, little cartridge of yep. napalm from behind the battery. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mm. No. But <laughs> seriously, no, GPD and the I and Neo, they're the perfect examples of companies that actually came out. It's like, oh, we have a product. Here it is. Uh, here's a, an Indiegogo campaign for you to place your order effectively. Yeah. And then <laughs> that's what oh, they did. And GPD has been doing very well. The I has been doing stupidly well, everything considered. Yeah. Go figure. I, you, <laughs> I, you, you, got, you got to imagine, though, the, the, those two projects are looking at Smach and going, OK, so we just got to do the opposite of everything right. that these dudes did. Yeah, and, don't and, fuck and that's it up the like they did. <laughs> they, they if, so if, much if, money. If, but, you know, that's one thing to anyone who didn't get a refund or still had hopes, because there's always that they're going to pull true believers. That sucks. I, I got feels for you, man. I've got burnt on stuff like that. There's a reason I don't pack hardware stuff anymore at all. And, um, or video games or video games. Hi, stainless. Um, so yeah, there is that. We do have some good news though. We got a day. How do you even do this? The, I always go with Damon. People say Damon, 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 but it like the, the actual letter is E it's demon. Matt Damon. Um, Matt Demon is back in space again. God damn it, you people. Uh, this is a blog post from the Unvanquished uh, blog um, saying that they have the Daemon Engine 0.52 out. You might be wondering, what the hell is the Daemon Engine? Well, you'd be sur- shock on shock. It's the engine that Unvanquished is, that, is running that's on. That's what I asked. Like the fuck is this? So, like, the, the, this sort of uh, informs the uh, development l- legacy of um, of sort of the Daemon engine. It's this amalgam of like IO Quake three and like X Real, which is inspired by Doom three, IO Doom three, which resulted in a bunch of other forks. Regar- regardless, the point is that this is. And this is distinct enough that you can call it a new engine. Uh, they want people to use it. They're showing they're trying to give you um, cases where, hey, this is where you would want to use it. We don't have a fully integrated development environment like Godot does. So this is for people who are starting from the ground up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, it, and it, this, this engine has been there for your consumption for a while. I remember covering this a couple of years ago. Um and there, there are other po- polished alternatives out there, like Godot, like Unity. Um, so I don't really see a lot of people saying, "Oh, this is this is the thing I want for our uh, for our new game project." Uh, but you know what? At the same time, I would like to see some other first person shooter games on Linux that aren't like Quake Three reskins. So how dare you? <laughs> yes, we can have natural selection too that actually works. No, and vanquished. No. <laughs> That, that, that's on the lock. Holy shit. It was over two years after that game's released where it wouldn't have insta spite nope right to your desktop oh, for well, doing something so crazy bad. like firing the, your the weapon. Dev, the dev team gave up and they're like, oh, the community will handle this. Mm-hmm. The AMD mm-hmm. approach. To be fair, it actually worked for AMD, not so much for uh, natural selection, too. Well, you know, AMD is just a tiny, tiny multi billion dollar company, you know, like, and can't afford mm-hmm. that. I mean, Intel could straight they have everyone invested into the hardware. Past the anti uh, trust regulations and all that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, not no, saying, the, I'm not saying uh, there isn't impressive? a bigger fish. I'm just. I'm just saying they, they they're poor poor little AMD. Oh, you gotta think about the little guy. The impressive bit about the uh, Demon Engine is they actually have the uh, big GPU compatibility list. You can still play technically the game, uh, still play it with OpenGL 2.1 GPUs, the ones that only support up to what, what, uh, OpenGL 2.1. Mean? Are you special? Like what? Hipsters can play the game. Yes. People with older, really old 
Hardware. 32, 32 bit game. 32 yes. bit computers can play this game. This is the kind of <laughs> effectively yes. all the yes. 32 bit pen. <laughs> wood paneling approved. That's what we got to deal with. <laughs> but let's talk about something new that all the kids have been playing for 20 years. Uh, Equake or Quake 3E. Uh, yeah, speaking it's a of the nice Quake 3 engine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking speaking of right, <laughs> didn't didn't plan that at all. Uh, this this is uh, Quake 3E. Um, it's developed as sort of a more modern, more secure, nicer performant Quake 3 engine, which I guess is nice. People have been asking for it. It adds like some of the Vulkan rendering stuff, improved OpenGL rendering, et cetera, et cetera. It has built instructions for like Raspberry Pi and OS X and whatnot. I mean, it's it's the it's the Quake 3 engine, right? You've, you've played it. If you've played any first person shooter on Linux prior to, uh, I want to say like 2008, you probably played Quake 3. I wonder though, what is ultimately going to last longer is like io quake or like cobol all right in, in the far distant future i don't know i just doom. want to give this like a the answer to that is doom. <laughs> honking mention because it's not just the vulcan render that's a bit of thing they've optimized it you know they say you can expect between 10 and 200 percent increase in performance nice. the way i just imagine walking in like oh why did you do that with the vulcan they just like grab you by your shirt it's like because we could Fair enough. <laughs> right on. I mean, are, are, are we going to get like Quake 3 ray tracing, but like generic ray tracing? Uh, maybe, maybe. No, I, I'm just having like the smash cuts. Like, remember how we were joking about ray tracing and going IO Quake 3? Right. Mm. Yeah. Don't, don't make, don't <laughs> make jokes. Oh, we can do that. <laughs> oh, sounds like a brilliant idea. <laughs> they also yeah. improved the server side DOS protection. And we were talking during the break. Was like, hey, it's been a minute, man. I haven't played no Quake 3 in a while. Maybe that's something we'll do in an after show. Maybe next week or uh, week after that or whenever Alan gets it set up. Um, yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> pretty much that. So I ran across something. Hey, you're watching Twitch. We're on Twitch. We're doing that. You're watching later. You're watching on YouTube. Maybe you got one of these old bastards. Uh, this... It's a brand new invention called a Stream Deck. You've never seen one. It's a bunch of buttons in front of an LCD panel that on Linux, it's kind of dicey to play around with because there's really only one effort that has been put into getting these up and working. And it's functional, but the biggest problem is, is it uses X XD tool. <laughs> So anytime you try to switch from a window and say, hey, we're streaming, you get your game up and you need to switch scenes. I'm going from here to go to Pedro because Pedro's not paying attention. Oh, I am paying attention. I was paying attention to Doom 2.1 uh, pledging another $3.50. And that's how you do to become it, a sea monster. Yes. <laughs> Professionalism. I gave well, him a well. dollar. You gave him a one. God oh, damn it. <laughs> no wonder he keeps coming. No back. wonder he keeps showing up in Discord. Uh, <laughs> so I'm talking about a companion because with this, this is basically doing some shit that I was up to and been up to for the past year. I know you've probably heard about me. You know, I've just talked about it on stream and like, I can't make a video about how to do this. It's just too backwards and kludgy. But this is utilizing OBS WebSockets and a Raspberry Pi to install this. And there's a module just for OBS that is wicked easy to set up. I'm testing it right now. So far, so good. So if you've been looking to have a Stream Deck, do Stream Deck like shit on Linux, this is going to be the thing. This is going to do does it support ASCII penis? Man, I can put anything I want. I can have ASCII penis for days, Jordan. But what, what about reverse ASCII penis? Yeah, I can do images. <laughs> what, what about inverse ASCII oh, penis? Oh, okay. Yeah, and I can also do like a quadrant. I, I can like, make, a dude, it, it's got like. Like, like knuckles, knuckles the echidna's penis in the form of Man, I, it's like five screens to get to the end. Echidna penis. <laughs> Don't bother suggesting that for a show title because we're adulting this evening. Uh, yes, adulting. It's completely free and it'll allow you to switch your deck link without losing focus. That's great. And I'll be doing a video on this just to, after I get done testing it, mainly it's ease of use because you could run this, you could run it on your local server, you know, local host, I should say, not a problem. But Local ghost. You can also run it on like a Pi Zero W. So it's like... Do get done with it and it will be brilliant. But that's gonna do it for the news. That is coming up next. We're gonna wiggle our way into Lovecraftian wiggle. horrors and they're gonna wiggle back. Full wiggle. And maybe 
Maybe we'll get some more body parts. We're throwing chairs at In the House of Silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Seriously, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. It's the Chair Inquisition. We're taking a look at uh, In the House of Silence this week, developed by Kai Ruma Games, done on the Godot engine. Uh, you can pick it up for about 15 bucks US. Wrong button. What is it? I knew I was going to do it. Ha ha! In the House of Silence. <laughs> Uh, is a roguelite dungeon crawler uh, RPG where your equipment is your own body parts. Mutate your olden body to fight otherworldly abominations as you delve deeper into the House of Silence. We got to thank Kai Ruma Games for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. And once again, because Pedro likes this game, he gets to go first. I like video games in general, in case you haven't been paying attention. I usually am the one who gives the most chairs to games. So, hey, that's a bit e- of a Easily pleased. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am. In fact, I've mentioned that several times. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is the uh, PC that recorded the footage that you're technically looking at right now. I know there's not much to see, but yeah. It launches hello, out of the Hello, box. darkness. Yes. <laughs> it holds 144 and 2560 by 1440, and it's impressive to see Godot do that properly. Um, the, both the was and the arrow keys for movement were mapped out of the box. And since you only really need the keyboard, no mouse input, no, I mean, you could technically play with the, uh, controller, but it's a roguelike, just play with the keyboard. Um, yeah, all of it was mapped out of the box. So that was good. The music is very, very subtle, but it conveys the slightly silly yet horror atmosphere that the whole game is going for. So It does a good job at that. As for the fun, well, this isn't the first time I've mentioned that, but I really like the roguelike genre. I'm just not very good at them. And, um, well, I was uh, time to break out that spiel, but that was it. Uh, (laughs) uh, In the House of Silence is very much not an exception to that rule. The thing that sets it apart, but effectively kind of keeps the game mechanics exactly the same is the replacing of your character's appendages with different ones like monstrous claws you can replace one of your eyes monster with the trucks. mouth of a lamprey gonna be a monster truck uh i, I haven't found a monster truck yet but I, i've replaced uh, two of my legs with swords <laughs> i mean you can replace any body you part with totally any other that. body part Yes, you can. <laughs> you can have arms coming out of your eyes. It's uh, The game is very well done in that respect. And there are bonuses and penalties for different body parts. Uh, and the more you change your character, the more you realize that you're becoming exactly like the monsters that you're killing. It's got the whole Binding of Isaac thing going on. Oh, that 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 could just very well be me that I'm killing right now. Uh, and some of the monsters do actually have the same face as a protagonist person. So, yeah, the RPG mechanics are very few and far between. It's mostly about the body modifications and the stats that they give you. Uh, but as roguelikes go, yeah, this one's on point. And it doesn't screw you over by removing your currency uh, before you're given a chance to spend it after you die undermine uh if i had to point out a flaw is well you can't see anything most of the time (laughs) and since it gives you the option to effectively remove your eyes and replace them with other things yeah you can be just roaming around in the darkness not being able to see a damn thing uh yeah but even with both eyes that that is the range that you can see so I'll give it three chairs because yes, it does have that issue for me, but, uh, until, until you, until you get the (laughs) item that actually just lets you see the map, which I unlocked and I'm like, Oh, well, this is just easy mode now. Um, all right. uh, So check this uh, out, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls over here on my nice little box, which is a thread ripper, 1920 X, uh, 32 gigas jewels of the memory Ram and a little 2060. Yeah. It was able to pull this off. It was, everything worked out of the box. You know what? For the most part, it does that windowed mode thing where, you know, the user gets to decide what random geometry is going to be on display. That's always a fun time. Yeah. Dragon prey, baby. So as Pedro kind of alluded to, the controller kind of works? Question mark? I mean, you get in game, but it was clearly an afterthought with this. You know, uh, it does the, uh, hey, right analog stick is now a mouse sort of thing. Like, 
Well, okay, fine. We're just not going to play with that. So what I'm saying is be prepared to play with the was. Now, let's talk about a little bit of fun for this because this thing, am I alone for saying it genuinely poops achievements? Oh, it does. Yeah, I mean, I thought it's it, not as bad as some games we've thrown chairs at, but yes, it does. It's not, yeah. it's not as bad as Turnip Boy, but Turnip Boy also yeah. does that as a joke. I, I genuinely thought I was playing Sanity <laughs> Clicker for a moment there, but check this out. I mean, you can change your stats by mutating your body parts. That's kind of neat. I like that. Manage your sanity, prevent alterations to your perception of reality. That's called any day that ends with a Y. But you also get the ability to bump into baddies. That's your attack. You just snoot poop them like, uh, 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 and eventually somebody is going to die. Uh, now I might have accidentally replaced my head with a sword. So I had to spend 15 minutes using the mini map to navigate to the end of the level. I'm not bitter about that. <laughs> not even a little bit. It really is fun for the whole family. I'm kidding. This, this is like some framework, early access nonsense. Uh, someone kind of had the audacity to like slap that done tag on and put it on the Steam store for sale. I'm just being honest. This is just my opinion. But I don't feel like there's a lot of content here. Like very, very, very little content. And what, what exists is there's a lot of repetition to it. Because if you play the first five minutes and uh, ask yourself, hey, I really like this. I want a lot more of just this. It's got it for you. It does. I mean, that was th this is your experience for the 70 minutes I was able to put into it. No more, no less. So, I mean, if you like all that, that's a gem. I'm happy to see a game on Godot. Godot. Hence, cock that up and walk Godot. And, um, <laughs> hey, good work. Uh, maybe, maybe just not ready for prime time. That's all I can say to that, but I mean, it technically works. So there you go. All right. So on Fedora 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it launches out of the box. There's very basic graphics. I mean, yeah, like you can go into windowed mode. That's kind of it. Um, there's not really a lot of animation here. Generally, you just kind of squish in a given direction until you hit something. Um, I noticed that there is like little footsteppy animations, but that's just kind of barely there. Um, the soundtrack I actually like, it's pretty bumping, uh, control wise. Yeah. As these guys said, these are, this is pretty much designed for a keyboard. The steam overlay is like, yeah, you were mapping a keyboard to your controller because you insist on playing this with the controller. Um, fun wise. I, okay. So this game really, really hammers in the difference between rogue likes and rogue lights. This is rogue with a sanity meter. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I love Rogue. I love NetHack. They're great for killing time on production boxes. But Vulture's Eye and Vulture's Claw are free if you want a tile set roguelike. Um, and, like, the problem here is you're asking 50, for 15 bucks. Like, that's for a $5 game, I'd say that's maybe acceptable. But for 15 you got to do a little bit more. And, like, it's not that the game isn't fun per se. The navigation is good enough. And, you know, filling out maps triggers dopamine production in me like nobody's business. But I mean, you are like Vince said, you are just kind of fumbling around looking at the mini map, trying to find your way until you find the power up that lets you just see all the map all the time. And then you're just like, Oh, I'm just gonna make a beeline to the exits. And I got through several levels just by avoiding enemies, which is kind of how you succeed in rogue. Uh, but, the thing here is that it's it's very basic. Yeah, you can swap out uh, body parts. You can swap out uh, your stats and whatnot. But there's not really a lot of meat here. And I think it really affects the staying power when you compare it to like other roguelikes, uh, even even like much older ones. Uh, I it works for like quick coffee break sessions. But like I found myself really struggling to care past the 10 minute mark on every run. So I can't really give it a chair. It's it's not awful, but it's that worse than it's mediocre two chairs. So I've got we got any final thoughts about this before we head on on to the uh, hell are you talking about? I was looking for buttons. Um, did you notice like <laughs> the enemies did a great job of like coming right at you unless you needed I don't know about like twenty bones. Oh yeah. Well, the, uh, yeah, what, what I like it has is to that do the with enemies whether or not they have eyes. Uh, if they don't have eyes, they can't see you, so they don't come at you. <laughs> communicate. Uh, the, I, I just had them straight. They also right fight each from. other. I didn't notice that. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> which I, which I thought was pretty nice, and I, I, and I think that has to do with the lack of eyes. What happened if you re <laughs> replace your head with a sword? You don't get any light. 
Excellent. You love you love yeah, the same thing it. if you remove both of your eyes to say had uh, one of the um vampiric lamprey mouths to one of them and the other one is like a sword. Yeah, you don't it's you just see your character. That's and it. I think we can yeah. all agree that like as a core concept, there's something here to be developed oh, yeah. further. It's just I don't believe for a second that this is ready to be out of early access in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, oh, no. Your description it, it, was very much a roguelike, and as a roguelike, like Jordan said, this is effectively a rogue with a skin to it. Extra life. Yeah, it's it, it's it's the complete game, but my, my, my issue with it is, like, if you're going to compare this to literally any other roguelike out there, this is going to come up kind of lacking, because well, that's why I, not? That, that's kind of what I'm getting at, is, like, yes, yeah. it technically fits all the check marks in the mechanics side. That's about it. Yeah, and it's technically it's, it's, a it's, game, it's, yes. Yeah, and it's, it's it's very basic. So I can see, like, if this is the first rogue like proper you've ever played, I can see why you might get into this. But as someone who's played a lot of them, uh, there's not there's not really a lot of draw here. There's not really a unique hook. There's not really like this isn't ta- super- tales of Majeal or caves of Kud. Absolutely not. <laughs> No. And, 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 and again, I think, I think the, the price is what kind of sets me against this game. If they were charging $5 for this, I would be less, uh, less offe- yeah. offended. Yeah. Like for, for $15 for eight, like 18, almost $20 with tax Canadian. Yeah. This is not worth what you're paying for it. So, um, yeah, that's it. Coming up next alert, alert. We have a hate mail alert. It's the hate mail segment. My foot may or may not be going numb because I have my legs crossed underneath my desk. Why, why you don't you need to know that, yourself? but now you do. Is your, <laughs> is your foot bacon? Because now I want bacon. Bacon, <laughs> bacon. No, no, no. We'll have bacon later on when Jono's playing the guitar. But uh, before we get to that, we do uh, like to talk about the things that you had is issues the guitar made with. Of That's bacon? why it's called the hate mail. You can totally send us your own hate mail. I don't know if the guitar is made of bacon, but I, I'm kind of curious now. What would you do? The- <laughs> a meat guitar? I don't know, man. <laughs> meat guitar is my new band. Called it. <laughs> Electric meat guitars. Yes. Acoustic meat guitar only. No, I only play acoustic meat. <laughs> the jerky bass. Unplugged. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yes, if you'd like to let us know your band name that's based technically on meat, uh, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. If you're a game developer and you'd like us to play your game, make sure to include uh, three keys or something that we can share. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to play our game, and we're just going to make fun of you. And We've done that you, before, and we'll do it again. Look, look at it this way. Uh, I have limited sympathy. <laughs> For people unable to defeat the spam golem, which he's a nasty <laughs> bastard. He's a right nasty bastard. Have Hi, no Aldeus. <laughs> but there's also an email address on there. So he is. Uh, I'm just saying, I, if I was a betting man, may, maybe shoot something that way. If you have a press release or something with links in it or anything, the spam golem might be like, hey, that's spam. Yeah, don't use the form for URLs. Just. Or copy and paste formatted text from websites. <laughs> or URL yes, encode contains, every single character. Uh, forward slashes or greater thans or lesser thans. Well, yes. I, I'm just saying, if you're going to be copying and pasting, uh, give it the old control shift V. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Speaking of. Who's reading that? I guess. Light, I suppose. All right. Jordan. Yeah, I called it. <laughs> Ha-ha. This is from Light. They say, uh, great content. I'm a streamer on Twitch and I'm using Linux. So obviously having a hard time with Streamlabs. I walk through the tutorial that you have on YouTube, create Streamlabs alerts using Linux. However, I'm having issues downloading the dependencies. I know that the video is like three years old. Do you have an update on how to get Streamlabs alert generated with OBS using Linux? I would greatly appreciate it if you do. Plus the chat box. All right. How do you do it, Pedro? <laughs> you uh you go to the browser stream source. labs and then the link that they give you yes you just use the browser source that is already on obs nowadays that 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 old video was very useful it was amazing you don't need that anymore the the browser source is there already Sup- 
Yeah. Maybe update your version of OBS, though. We don't know what you're running, so maybe well, you have to throw it back yes. to get a rollback like that. <laughs> like, so we're talking about like OBS and uh, Streamlabs and that text, right? That's always a weird one to do, isn't it? Right there. Like any type of text, if you want to be using Streamlabs, uh, what's the other one? There's another one we use. We like two different services, but all it is is transparent nonsense. And the browser source is the way to do it. But if you're using something like, say, hey, I'm running Debian 10. It's not uh, updated to stream elements. Yeah, stream elements. Yes, thank you. So the moral of the story is if you don't have it in your OBS build and there's not one available in newer, more recent version made in the last decade, build it from source. Do not use that video for anything other than this is how we used to do it way back in the day. I'm going to make it updated. Does that script of yours still work, that OBS compile script? You don't need it. it. They get a GitHub. You can copy and pasta from yeah. Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, <laughs> Arch. But that requires reading now, and if not it, it, copying stuff out of <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com. Yeah. It automatically f- figures out if you have the NVIDIA drivers installed. And if it does, it gives you the NVNC option. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was Clearly just looking to point the dude at a, at a thing to build OBS. But apparently there is one on their GitHub. So you yeah, should check out, uh, and just check it out. Build it yourself. You can learn how to use uh, Git and all that fun stuff. But it's simple as that. We, we've come a long way. In. I'm currently running uh, OBS 27 RC 3-ish, a little more ahead of that. Something to look forward to. You're going to have your Twitch integration right there and your docs and all the fun stuff along with it. So, yeah. Did, did anything in OBS like 3 for a loop? I'm curious because I've been tangoing with OBS for so long now. I... Like I, I didn't make it do what I needed to. Uh, most of the, the stuff that I play around with, I it's because I saw someone eat or either you, Ven, or anyone else go. Oh, you can do this with OBS. Okay, let's try. Oh, there you go. All right. Yeah, for for <laughs> for me, it's just more like the the stuff I'm interested in trying to stream. Mm-hmm. I don't like I would if I wanted to do the way Ven's doing it. I need like five more computers. And uh, d- so that that's that's where my struggles are coming in. Five more computers. What do you mean? For I mean, as I was going to say, but apparently I'm the one who's not very good at math. So poor. So, I, <laughs> several 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 more guests is the point, right? Like I p- I picked a number out of my butt. But, you can yeah. do that with one computer poorly, but it's dual. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, poor poorly is kind of the the operative uh, word here. Do it. Yeah. Try, trying to do it in a better way. But yeah, that I think that's less so an OBS feature and more just like capturing multiple people's audio and video simultaneously. Yeah, that, that is like... And having the, different sources that you can individually yeah, control. Yeah, yes. yeah that, 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 that's more of an overall challenge than something that OBS will just magically fix. This is like one of the differences. Um, yeah, you can... I mean, you can lean on OBS that heavy. OB, OBS is a part of what we do. <laughs> like you know, you're gonna stick this stuff together at the end, but yeah, if you get any questions like that, feel free to send them in next week, or uh, you can ask uh, Pedro about his uh, bacon feet. Yeah, bacon feet, bacon, they are delicious. bacon feet. I can't bring them up to my mouth, which is the only reason I still have feet. But hey, there you go. Hey, on that protein-powered, impact feet-packed <laughs> bacon bombshell. We are going to cue the music and we're going to think, uh, what was the name of the project? I don't remember. I'll be making a video about it because my Raspberry Pi did a good job running this stream deck. <laughs> it's called Companion as yes. I scroll up. I knew what it was. That Thank time. you. Yes. Focus Companion. Yes. <laughs> Open source, baby. But hey, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter or just at Vin on our federated timeline thing of Masty Doniness at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I am Horbell's ready cooked Jordan Svung. I'm microwave ready. And oh man, I good to go in your Horbell. sandwich. And I'm like, oh, Horbell, yeah. Bring, smash that Horbell fan. Yes. You can put me put me in your sandwich <laughs> at twittercom slash fool or twitch.tv slash fool. And you can find me simping for all the Horbells <laughs> at unaccounted for on Twitter. <laughs> Is that what you call Nori? <laughs> Uh, Nori isn't even on Twitter anymore. She uh, she nuked her account. She's on so. Instagram, bro. Get with it. She is. She is an artist. So it th- th- kind of makes sense that that's is she, she would is, be, so. is she on is she on Pinterest so I can find her on Google instead of literally anything else I, I want to find? Think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you got to search Facebook, Instagram. I can. 
I don't want to. <laughs> roll the credits, please. <laughs> I, Get us out of here. I, I'm just letting him roll, baby. Let's see where he wants to take it. Ah, uh, credits, credits, credits. <laughs> Boom. Wait. Take two. Boom. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Well, we got to thank all the people at the end of the show that we normally do because they're the ones it who take make this possible. It would take as long as we did it at the beginning. That's true. It's like the credits of old movies, right? They're just all front loaded. Uh, we got to thank Omega. We got to thank <laughs> Artherin. We got to thank our executive producers, Aldius, Bob Brent, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, my goons, Mr. T Han, Mr. Drummer Seven, Mr. Holy Toast, and our lone little Nikki fan. Just constantly listening to Chicago, man. It's Darkwing. I just see monsters. Jack B. Renew. Ryder. Um, Trudgy. Verzenuda. Justin Frostclaw. Kylitics. And the Death Notes. Nova K. Bezel B. Chad P. Romeo. Marcin I always K. think you said Nova K. Craig H. Renee. So, so do yes, I. Nova well, K. I think that might we'll get all the be the coming in. Right. Uh, Christoph <laughs> Nubbins. Holy Leonardo. Steven. Mr. Amish. Ertan. Jolly M. Kim. Rohit. And Mir. Jonas. Ryan. Incredible lyrics. Dementor. Benjamin. Minus. And Monica. Yeah. Simcha. Thank you all. Yes. Simcha Torah. So, so much. <laughs> happy, not, Simcha. happy Yom Kippur. <laughs> Enjoy the action <laughs> feed. Actually, is Passover coming up? I don't even know. When are holidays? <clears throat> holidays don't matter anymore. Every day is a holiday. We want bacon feet. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>